So what does TRANSFORM stand for? Well, it stands for Training and Nurturing Scholars for Research that is Multidisciplinary. What's shown here is our conceptual model of how we think TRANSFORM will help all of you for those who are scholars, those who are obviously budding scientists from early career to mid-career, as well as allied research uh, uh, personnel. And so uh, the purpose of the TRANSFORM programs is to actually provide research skills, i.e. expertise in content areas, to provide new research skills, uh, such as biostats or epidemiology or translational research methods, collaboration, and most importantly, we want to actually teach people how to lead research teams. Now, what our outcomes are, are that we want, uh, you know, the scholars and the allied research personnel to conduct and disseminate very important and innovative research, ultimately that impacts health in a positive way. And I just mentioned leadership, but we want people to, when they're trained by our transform programs to be a leader in interdisciplinary team science research. And then as I personally think about uh, research career development, I think it's circular like life. And in fact, we want to actually uh, train early stage investigators to become mid-career and then senior, and then subsequently train the next generation of scholars. Next slide, please. So this is just a brief overview of our programs. I don't have enough time in five minutes to go through uh, these, but I will go through them in a general sense. So we train everyone from undergraduates all the way up to junior faculty as well as mid-career. You can see under the undergraduate category, we have a program called BESS, which is Biostatistics Epidemiology Summer Training. It's a summer training program that's now uh, ten, more than 10 years old. It's focused on underrepresented persons uh, from universities and expose students to epidemiology and biostats because we want them to be uh, you know, exposed and then prepare for a career in actually in the biomedical sciences. We have a traditional TL1 program. It's similar to a T32. Um, and it's a two-year program that uh, enrolls pre and postdocs. Uh, to sort of integrate with what Dr. Chung said, our TL1 program actually is focused on precision medicine. And we have a broad definition of what precision medicine here is in the Irving Institute. And uh, we've had a number of successful scholars actually come through our program. For both postdocs and junior faculty, we have the Columbia Summer Research Institute. This is a boot camp uh, that was now it's in its 13th year. It was designed by Dr. Lee Goldman, who actually now joined us as uh, a faculty in teaching. He originally designed this program. It's based on the Harvard uh, Boot Camp for Research. And this is a program that actually gives people foundational knowledge and skills to actually conduct clinical and translational science. So you learn about biostats, epidemiology, race and health, learn how to write grants, and actually you know how to actually disseminate your science. Now that's 10 credits. If you're interested in the full master's, we have the master's in patient-oriented research, which is a two-year commitment. And it's a total of 30 credits through Melman. And the Columbia Summer Research Institute is merely the first 10 credits. And then you can go on to get the full master's if that's what you want. For junior faculty, uh, at the assistant professor level, we have an institutional KL2 program, which I'll go into a little bit more. And this is a two-year program that helps assistant professors actually uh, reach independence. And then we have a reach for the first R01 program, which is very popular, which helps uh, assistant professors and other faculty prepare for their first grant. And like I said, it's been wildly successful and wildly popular. And then those who are sort of uh, leaving the early career stage who are now mid-career, there's an early uh, Irving Scholars Award program. It's really a research distinction award for the best junior faculty here at Columbia. And we, uh, it's been a pleasure for me to actually run this program with Murdoch. We basically see the best of the best at the uh, uh, Columbia Irving uh, Medical Center. And then a chosen few is selected for this award. 
Next slide, please. This is our leadership and administration. Obviously, I'm Daichi Shimba, I'm the director of Transform, and I'm also co uh, or multi PI of the KL2 prom, uh, program along with Janine Geckinger. Uh, we have two new uh, uh, directors, Marissa Spam and Jacqueline Taylor, very accomplished in their own research disciplines, who now are multi PIs of the TL1 program. And just a shout out to Henry Ginsburg, who obviously is Director Emeritus of the Irving Institute, and he just stepped down as the past TL1 PI, but remains on the TRANSFORM program leadership. And then we have Harley Lynch, a very experienced senior program manager who runs all of our programs. Again, I don't have enough time to actually go through all the wonderful faculty which are listed here, as well as the other members of our team that support all of our programs in TRANSFORM. Next slide, please. We've been very busy. This is just simple highlights. There are many more from our last funding period, which ended in 2020. Again, multiple programs across resource. This is not just our resource, but they do spend six resources altogether. We've trained almost 1800 allied research personnel. We have 280 participants in, in the transform programs, such as the TL1, CSRI, the master's program, KL2, Reach for the First R01, and Irving Scholars Program. So these are very busy and active programs. And you can see that here are some of our outcomes for the TL1 and KL2. The ones I want to highlight is of the KL2 scholars that we've trained, 28 of them, 100% remain in research and produced 371 publications. And I'm happy to report 80% have gone on to get an independent grant defined as a K, an R01, or other foundation grant. So very successful program uh, for this last funding period. Next slide, please. Just a brief overview of our aims for our, our current grant period, which we just entered. Obviously, we want to continue our current programs, but we're very much interested in developing new programs for clinical and non-clinician scientists and allied research personnel. And obviously, just paraphrasing here, we want them to be successful in their careers and ultimately helping, helping patients and communities. Next slide, please. Along with the theme of demonstrating, obviously we not only want to develop, but we want to show people that we've been successful. And we've developed really a comprehensive and systemic evaluation program and just making sure that we continuously identify issues and, and actually improve upon them. And ultimately, we do want to show that we've been successful. Next, next slide, please. And then finally, because we don't operate in a vacuum, we're very much interested in disseminating all of our innovative programs actually within Columbia across campus, and of course, to our local, regional, national partners. Next slide, please. I don't have time to go through all of these. I'm just gonna pick out a few things. We have lots of things that we're proposing in the renewal. So we're broad and also we're deep. And so you can see here, we have new workforce training. We're expanding our current programs to focus on community-based participatory research and dissemination and implementation research. And we have renewed focus on interdisciplinary and team science. We have a lot of new collaborators here at Columbia as well outside of the institution. We have other approaches that we're very much interested. I might be biased, but I'm very much interested in the group peer mentoring program. We have a very successful Aspire 1 and Aspire 2. These are group peers of um, women scientists, many of whom are underrepresented persons. These are rising stars at Columbia, and they're really focused on mentoring one another, and we well support them in their endeavor. And then you can see here on the right, we have a whole bunch of dissemination plans. One that, ones that I want to highlight is that we're now working with Pittsburgh. They have this customized online uh, IDP and uh, we want, we're actually testing that in a randomized control trial. We hope to disseminate that more broadly at Columbia. And then we have a team science focus of actually evaluating how good are we uh, and, uh, you know, and actually developing team science and, and leadership skills. Next slide, please. So I just want to go back to it, who we are. 
if you are a scholar, budding scholar, or someone who is an allied research personnel, Transform is here to help you. You can see that we're doing a lot. And ultimately, we have been successful and we're pretty confident in the current grant period. We will continue to be successful and we have a lot of resources to support your interest to become successful in your chosen careers. Next slide, please. This is a shout out of a Transform exemplar. Dr. Gisette reyes Sofer is a dear friend who's in BPNS in the Department of Medicine. She actually benefited very widely from our career development program. She was a Kale II scholar. She was an Aspire men, uh, a member. Remember, I just told you that group peer mentoring program of successful women scientists and also Reach for the First R01. It's very important to note that she's used multiple resources. As Murdoch has said, there's 13 resources here at Columbia. She's used uh, the Maya Barker's Core Lab and the CRR and his other, well, other resources, and she's had much access to uh, other funding here uh, within the Irving Institute. So I just want to close there. Uh, thank you so much for allowing me to tell you about all the transform programs.